This is the Pagel T4. The smallest of the current gen suspension equipped electric unicycle. And this week I'm going to ride it and try to hit every single pothole and rocky trail I can find and let you know why I think this is one of the best wheels that Bigo has in their lineup right now. And I'm gonna tell you about my love-hate relationship with this wheel. Are you ready for some classic Gotway action? Roll the intro! Shout out to EV for sponsoring this video. But instead of a boring ad read, we're gonna make Coda, their store mascot, do a cute trick for you. Pound it. Can you pound it? Pound it. Good boy. Can you give me a kiss? Proper kiss. Give me a kiss. Proper kiss. Proper kiss. Gonna give me a kiss. Kisses. Oh, thank you. Proper kisses. I think he's so nervous. Because we're all watching. <laughs> all right, I think Koda is slowly working his way up to learning how to ride an EUC. Maybe next week. But check out their store if you're local to Vancouver and their online shop and help support a great dealer. And don't forget to hit that like button to tell the Google algorithm that you want to see even more EUC videos. Now for those of you who are new to the EUC sport. <laughs> Let me tell you about my love-hate relationship when it comes to Bego or the company formerly known as Gotway. And regardless of whatever they like to be called, the one thing they're known for is as the builder of high-performance electric unicycle. They were the very first company to introduce a 100-volt wheel that finally broke the 40 miles per hour barrier. And aside from that in specification, they also embraced the EUC enthusiast in ways that other companies companies don't. They allow the option to disable tilt back and let the rider do their own speed check based purely on voltage warning alone and built wheels are easy to open and modify. That and releasing low quantity niche wheels like the 22 inch monster I love so much as well as the tiny M10 4. Power to the riders, however, the flip side of the coin are that the Go Gotway wheels in general are built to a lesser tolerance and require more cares, modification, and know-how to ride and maintain. They just need more love. And that remains true when it comes to the T4. The modular approach the Go typically take when it comes to building their wheel is evident here. And you see components like the slider or the suspension bracket all taken from the master. The integrated foam seats on top top is custom designed for this wheel. However, it's made out of the same material as that of the seat on the master. So it's probably gonna tear and crack if you just look at it the wrong way. As a matter of fact, I can see a small crack already forming right here, even though this wheel is brand new. The display on top is also taken from the standard parts bin, and there's not much to say other than that it's functional and unfortunately not terribly visible under direct sunlight, as you can see. There is a pretty well-placed trolley handle that isn't particularly tall but does make moving the wheel around pretty easy but it's made out of the cheap plastic and thin aluminum as the trolley handle on the master which is to say never try to lift this wheel using this handle here because it's probably gonna snap the first time you try. Speaking of which, the girls conveniently forgotten to include a kickstand which means that there's no easy place to actually grab the wheel to lift it unlike the master and there's really no good spot for you to hold on to this wheel to carry it up and down stairs and at 65 pounds it's not exactly feather light either. And there's more. The firmware is buggy and sometimes brick the wheel when you try to update and the tricky recovery method sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And finally, this is also a batch one wheel with a known motor stator slip problem that could cause spontaneous cutout and the motor is actually currently under recall. So if you're buying this wheel new, you should make sure that you're getting one that's already fixed. If your reaction to all that is shock, 
in disbelief that a product that costs as much as two brand new iPhone could have that many problems right out of the box, then the Bugol T4 is unfortunately probably not for you. But if your reaction is, ooh, I can't wait to mop the heck out of this wheel, and I got a whole bunch of custom design parts I 3D printed myself that I'm gonna pile on this wheel once I get it, then my friend, welcome to the Bigo Riding Club. <laughs> You see, the Go wheels are built for a different kind of riders, one who couldn't be bothered by silly pedestrian problems like poor build qualities or crappy designs, as we all know that in the end, the only thing that truly matter is how well the electric unicycle rides. And it's time to take the T4 out for some initial impressions. First of all, this is one of the smallest current gen suspension equipped high performance electric unicycle unicycle you can buy and at 100 volt running a high torque C30 motor and even more so than the Emotion V12 HT you can feel the power and acceleration immediately when you step foot on this wheel and ergonomically it's very wide even though it's smaller front to back so it's almost like kind of square I don't mind it as much I'm used to straddling much larger wheel and I'm used to that but for someone who's new and starting out this may make it a little bit harder to ride because of that additional width it also has a very square profile on the top which means that uh, it has the tendency to cut into your knee despite it being only a hundred volt you get almost as much acceleration as the 134 volt master because it's designed for lower end performance this is running a 16 inch tire it feels very agile and maneuverable pretty good fit for like everyday runabout use we gotta go and find ourselves a set of staircase just to see how the suspension actually um, holds up all right let's go oh that's not bad at all yeah this suspension is definitely an improvement it feels so much lighter still bottoms out a little bit let's do that again yeah it really takes it very well and give you good control like i'm always concerned that when i hit the bond and it bonds out too hard then like you can't turn and maneuver yourself very easily but here there's no issues it's definitely a improvement as compared to the um, original master uh, the master feels kind of just a little bit too soft it still bonds out a little bit when you hit that flat surface at the end of the staircase couldn't really be held with an air suspension i think very maneuverable just like riding around running about like at a lower speed i'm uh, not on the avenues and not just speeding alone but you know for neighborhood cruising like this it's perfect Now, unfortunately, I gotta also say that um, this suspension system exhibit the same issue as the one on the master. And by that, I mean it has a tendency to twist a little bit when you hit a pothole or even when you're riding at high speed. I'd say it's a little bit less of an issue here because unlike the master, it's, this is not a wheel that you can hit 50 miles per hour anyway so let's take it back 
and take a closer look at what the issue is. Now I'm not gonna waste your time and cover the same issues I had talked about previously. For more details, check out my Master versus Sherman S comparison videos. Short of it is that because of a lack of a structural side panel, the T4, very much like the Master, has a tendency to twist just enough to make the control of this wheel a little bit less predictable as compared to, let's say, a non-suspension wheel. For someone who doesn't have a strong baseline of EUC riding skill because of this wheel's slightly unpredictable feedback, it make learning a little bit harder to do. Now, if you're an experienced rider and if you're coming from a non-suspension Gotway wheel, the additional cushion and traction you get from having the suspensions definitely make the T4 a very attractive buy. But the limited top end speed due to the high torque motor that T4 run does somewhat limit what you can do unless what you're interested in is riding off-road. So today is not exactly the optimal condition to ride off-road, but I had to take the T4 out. Because this wheel, at least based on specification alone, would make a great off-road wheel. It's a 16-inch tire paired with a high torque motor, which means that it would have a lot of torque output. Plus, it has a decent solid suspension system. Again, super important when it comes to off-road riding. And the smaller tire and lighter weight also means that it should be more maneuverable as compared to something like let's say the master and just even from this little bit of riding it become immediately obvious that this is a very very good idea like this is a very steep trail <laughs> like i wasn't able to make it up on a bunch of other wheels on the t4 it's effortless what matters here is the effectiveness of the suspension system as well as torque because with better torque or oh, this is a really steep descent <sighs> okay <laughs> i try to go up the bank to avoid all that gnarly rock and roots and stuff and i got caught the problem is that with leaves on the ground it's a little bit hard to tell what it is that you'll hit. The pedals on the T4 is decent when it comes to height, I mean. Also the other problem is that I'm running the stock pads, which means that I'm not particularly locked in. So, whew, very sketchy. Ooh. Ooh. Huh. But still, that went really nice. I actually took the Emotion V12 HC here and it performed really well. I think compared with the T4 here, the V12 actually have just a little bit more torque. Suspension does sap a little bit of it. I mean, both of them are wonderful on trails when it comes to climbs, but without having the suspension, the V12 is definitely at a distinct disadvantage. it's only a hundred volt for something like this at a lower speed it is really more than sufficient there is a really really steep hill here that's the really steep hill um, I actually took the v12 up that hill last week there's a point where it stopped and I measure it it was 40 degree I think at that kind of angle actually is it this hill no it's not <laughs> so here the problem is not really torque. There's just not enough traction with a single wheel. The ground is covered with leaves. I think looking at this hill, th I can probably make it up here. Probably like 30, 35. Doesn't matter how much torque you have. At some point, you're just literally spinning your wheels and not getting nowhere. Even with a suboptimal um, setup where I'm not really locked in, I can just tell that if you have better condition, this wheel will be just a bucket 
of fun. And having that suspension give you the confidence to ride faster. Like when I was on the V12 last week, I had to really take it slow. Because of the leaves, I wasn't able to see what is underneath. There's this one single instance when there was a stump in the ground that I couldn't see uh, because it was covered by leaves. Tripped on it and I end up base planting. Without suspension, I would have to ride like really, really slowly. On the T4, I feel very confident to just power up and ride through so much <laughs> it's so nice to ride through the wood like this without anyone so if you do already or are thinking of doing more off-road trail riding the t4 is your wheel out of all the different electric unicycle i ever rode i think this is the most fun i ever had but since very few of us have the luxury of owning multiple electric unicycle each dedicated to specific use for the most part whatever you got have to serve general duties time to push the t4 and see how this wheel hold up in the road but first obviously we have to get rid of this nasty stock pad and to explain why I think these stock pad sucks is that it's not that you can't torque the wheel but that because of how far back this is it forces you to torque the wheel with a straight leg which as I have mentioned on multiple occasions is something you should never ever do if you're gonna lean and torque the wheel with your knee bend that means your knee is going to be much further forward and it's not a position that any of the stock EUC pads support. Why I think these stock pads are terrible things for people to ride with because it teaches you what in my opinion is an unsafe riding stance. Time to crank the T4 hard and see how it will survive the streets of New York City. Just so you know there's going to be a few things that's probably going to hold me back from really cranking on this wheel. Aside from the motor stator slip problem, what concerns me more was that when I was riding this wheel yesterday, oh, look at the kids having fun. Get rid of that front wheel, you don't need it, come on. <laughs> oh, look at this dude. <laughs> wow. Well. You hit all kind of uh, fun stuff. So what I was uh, saying was trying to push the wheel to see how fast it will actually be. 60 kilometers per hour, which is 38 miles per hour, sent as my monster. Not surprising for a 100 volt high torque motor. What was unexpected was that the wheel dipped like right there without any warning. Usually the beep is for 80% voltage. You have a cushion of 20%. So I wasn't expecting that. I'm gonna push the wheel, but I'm probably not gonna try to replicate the issue I have from yesterday because it's just as cold as yesterday. So some initial observation, the suspension does perform very well. Again, this is the best of the Gotway Bago suspension I have rode with so far. I'm hitting some pretty large bumps here without any issues. It's not as good as the suspension on the Sherman. Yesterday when I was riding off-road, I had it set at 210 psi makes it a little bit on the soft side but today i got it back up to 240 now it definitely feel a lot stiffer i gotta be very careful here let's not go overboard this would have never happened if i was on a sherman s it's funny because for a motion v12 ht it was sufficiently fast i was able to keep up with traffic and everything but you know there's always part of me that think this is a big goat wheel. 38 just doesn't seem like it's enough no more.
is not what you're after and you want a competent all general purpose commuter wheel, I can't find no complaint with it. I gotta look for that excitement. Let's try to get it to beep. Yeah, the torque on this is no joke. But I can feel it slip. Like, we're at the limit right here already. I don't know why I can't love this wheel the same way I do with the V12, even though they have similar amount of power and speed. The advantage of having suspension, which theoretically should make road riding more comfortable. But the Go wheel isn't about comfort. Like it's about performance. It's about excitement, speed, and something that is the middle of the road just kind of doesn't do it for me. And that is where I landed with the T4 in the end. This is an electric unicycle that is very compelling in the bush and on technical off-road trails, but on the road, it lacked the sense of excitement that makes dealing with the GOAT problems worthwhile. And for the many reasons I have mentioned, I still don't think the Big GOAT T4 makes for a good starter wheel, but if this is where you long to ride, then the T4 is your wheel. So what do you think? Am I too speed obsessed to appreciate the T4 for what it is? Or are you also tired of dealing with all the Bago problems? Well, that is what the comment section below is for. And you know what? Aha! I somehow had managed to trick you into wasting another, yikes, 25 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love Electric Unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friend, teach them how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank yeah. you.